Now, with that being said, let me give something. <laughs> um, I think one of the reasons why we're so preoccupied with like uh, buying things is um, because, you, you know, when, when, I, when, I, when I think about what St. Paul says about the, the weight and the sins uh, that doth so easily beset us, in the, in the next verse he says, so, so let us run with patience, the race. And, and I think that's interesting language because it seems to imply that the opposite of, of being distracted by all this stuff and held back by all this stuff is running with patience, mm. which is different from what I would expect. I, I would expect him to say something like, hey, lay aside the weight so you can run really fast. But he's saying lay aside the weight so you can run with patience. And many of the traps that we fall into are the result of us trying to accelerate or shortcut our way through processes that are meant to be slow. You know, Alan Watts said regarding music that the purpose of a song, if it were to finish it, the best musicians would be the ones who played the fastest. But there are some things in life that are not valuable because of our ability to finish them quickly. Some things are valuable because of our ability to be present, because of our ability to be slow, because of our ability to learn whatever that process is trying to teach us. And I think one of the things that the message of, of simplicity has for this generation is the positive role that suffering and sacrifice plays in our pursuit of a meaningful life. What's happening now is that we are being fed messages by some of the most brilliant minds of our time who have a lot to gain by these kinds of indoctrination. We are being fed messages that you are what you have. You are what you have. And not only that, but you are what she has. You are what he has. You are what she looks like and what he looks like. And they present you with images of things, most of which aren't even real, telling you that unless you get that, unless you get that, you don't get to be a player in the game. And one of the reasons why I take issue with this idea that, that uh, simplicity is only for rich people is because you don't have to possess something in order to be preoccupied with it. You don't have to possess it in order to pursue it. And most of the people that are preoccupied with things are people that don't possess it, but they're defining their lives by the pursuit of it because of stories that they're being fed by people who are socially engineering the world to get us to all ask the same set of questions, to get us all to debate the same set of issues, to all think in the same direction. And so a lot of our young people today are up against a very powerful force where it feels psychologically impossible to desire what is right. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a term called hyperpleasure that uh, refers to the, the challenge that this generation is having to be satisfied with simple things that are more valuable and entertaining than the things they're accustomed to. So for example, one could make the case that um, sunlight is more entertaining than scrolling on your phone. But scrolling on your phone is a form of hyperpleasure. It's engineered in a way to give you these artificial dopamine hits that can't be matched by the sun, by the sun, right? And so we're so addicted to artificial pleasure that whenever we get a dosage of real pleasure, like sunlight and, and fresh water and clean air, a hike, going out into the mountains, mastering a skill, we say, this is boring. Not because it's intrinsically boring, but we, but, but because we have to rewire ourselves to enjoy simplicity again. It's like drugs. We're drug addicted. We're drug addicted. And we suffer from a, a great, great disordering of our natural God-given appetites. And, and so, uh, you know, we're, we're at a place now where things like the pleasure of mastering a new language or mastering an instrument, the pleasure of talking to a human being face-to-face -face and making friends, the pleasure of reading something that's not just a blog, but a, a long book where you have to stick with a train of thought for a really long time, the pleasure of going for a walk or going for a hike. These are hard pleasures, not hyper pleasures, but hard pleasures are the pleasures that last long. They feel the most rewarding. And what we need to do to counter the, the world's message of hyper pleasure is to shift the focus from the stuff to the creative power that we have as human beings to make something of this world that it wasn't when we got here. And I think that's the direction in which the solution lies. Yeah. That's so good. It's so, I mean, what you're talking about too is love, like yeah. love, like, yeah. like love is wanting the good for the other person and, and just kind of being in the present moment with the person 
to accept them as they are, receive them and give your own self in that moment to in, coexist together, you know, that word. Yeah. And we are so distracted by the stuff, as you say. Uh, there's so much that you just said that I was I was thinking about. That. I was like, oh, that's such a good point. That's such a good point. When you were saying earlier, when I asked about the practical, like Tesla or Toyota. Oh yeah, okay, sorry. I didn't no, that practical. I mean, it's all yeah. such good stuff. And I think your point there, and I want to go, you said a, multiple things I want to come back to.